Hi. Uh, today we're going to work at the wall. And today's workout is going to focus primarily on your legs and hips with a little integration work to include the rest of your body. I want you to start out with your back against the wall and your feet about two feet away from the wall. And then just lean into the wall so that you can feel your hips, your rib cage, and your head supported against it. Before we begin, slightly bend your knees just to make sure you're not locking them while we do our focused breathing. I want you to take your hands, wrap them around your lower ribs like you're hugging yourself, and we're just going to observe the breath first. Take a slow breath in through your nose and feel the rib cage expanding in every direction, right into your hands and into the wall itself. And then exhale through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle that's all the way across the room to help you begin to wake up and engage those deep abdominal layers. As you breathe in, feel the breath expand out to the side. Imagine it going down to your toes and up to your head. And then when you exhale, you're going to lift your pelvic floor, draw your abdominal muscles in, relax your neck and your shoulders. Let's do that two more times. The reason I tell you to imagine the air going to your toes and to your head, I'm not trying to lie to you, the air does not go there, exhale. But it's a, a reason to give you a quick body scan. If you imagine the air going down to your toes, you can just feel that you have legs, that your feet have contact with the floor and then exhale and feel that compression, the muscles grabbing into the torso to hold you against that wall. One more time. And then when you feel that air go all the way up to your head, it helps keep you tall, long through your spine. And one more exhale. Now let your arms hang. Let's do a little roll down, same leg position. Breathe in again. When you exhale, nod your chin and start to curl forward off the wall. We're gonna keep going down, even letting the hips tip, but make sure the pelvis stays in contact with the wall. And as you curl forward, pretend you are hanging over a railing so the abs still have a reason to like draw into your spine. Stay hanging and take a breath in, and then exhale, roll back up. If you're having trouble rolling through your low back, put a little more bend in your knees to help facilitate that. Inhale at the top, exhale, drop your chin, curl forward, let your arms just hang so your neck and shoulders relax. Find that support from your abs. Breathe in again and roll back up. We're just going to do it one more time. Inhale at the top and then exhale. Tip your chin down, curl forward over your legs. One more breath in, feel the ribs expand and then roll back up to the top. All right, put your hands on your hips. You're going to keep your legs just like this and we're going to slide down the wall into a wall squat. If you can, try to get your hips as low as your knees and then push yourself back up. As you're going up and down against the wall, sense your back again. Try to keep your head, your ribs, and your hips in contact with the wall. And when I say hips now, what you're going to feel is really the back of your pelvis, which is your sacrum, that triangle-shaped bone. When you're rising up, push down into your heels, activate your glutes to help you lift. This will not be the most intense glute contraction you'll feel in this workout or in general. Two more times. So even though it's not the full strength of that contraction, pretend your glutes are like an elevator lifting you up. Last one, and then back up. Okay, bring your feet just a touch closer. Turn your heels together and your toes out so you're in first position. And I want you to lift your heels just a little bit. Try to make your V narrow enough that your heels can still be touching when you lift them and you feel that nice strong connection at your inner thighs. All right, let's do the exact same exercise again. Bending your knees as you inhale and come back up. Let's move your hands to another position. I'm going to change it on everyone. Okay, what I want you to watch here is that the width of your knees when they split apart is matching the angle you've turned out your feet. So we're going to try to track the knees over the index toe and the middle toe. Every time you come up, use that squeeze of your heels to activate your inner thighs. Three more like this. And up, last two. And lift one more time. And up. All right, legs back to parallel. Arms out in front of you now. Come on down into that squat and now you're going to hold. Lift your heels and drop your heels. Let's repeat that. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, lift and exhale lower. This will get tired probably before your calves. Keep going. Arms up now. Inhale, feel those ribs expand. And let's do three. 
and two, and one. Put your heels down, circle those arms down when you come back up. And again, back down. Heels up, heels down. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Breathe into your back, connect with the core, and up. One more like this, don't stop the legs, arms back up for five more, and drop. Keep your weight even across the whole width of the foot. Last two, one, circle your arms around, come on back up. All right, hip rolls are usually an exercise we do on, your, on uh, the mat, laying on your back. I'm gonna have you come back down into your squat, place your hands against the wall now, and we're gonna try hip rolling away from the wall. So I want you to begin tucking your pelvis, push your hips away from the wall, and then you're gonna roll back down through your ribs, your low back, and your hips. As you exhale, curl the hips off the wall. So you're gonna keep the knees bent, but your thigh angle is definitely gonna change, kind of like we're doing a water skier exercise, and then roll back down exactly like you're doing water skier. <laughs> exhale, curl away from the wall, and then roll back two more times. Exhale, try to feel each vertebra pressing back against the wall in order. Last one, tuck the pelvis, push away, and roll back. Come on back up. All right, we're gonna turn sideways to the wall, and I'm gonna have you go into a lunge very close to the wall. My, uh, I assume you're like this too. My arm and my shoulders make me wider up here than at my hips. So if you lean your upper arm against the wall for a second, that'll let you make just enough space so you're like inside legs that far from the wall. And I'm gonna have you drop into a lunge, but at a height you can stay in for a little while. All right. You're gonna begin with your upper body rotated, hands behind your head, but your elbows can be a little forward of you if that's more comfortable. I'm gonna rotate as I trace a rainbow with my elbow on the wall. So I'm gonna go up and around, turning to face the wall, and then up and around to return. So once I start this exercise, even though my foot's a little bit away from the wall, I'm gonna allow the hip to lean into the wall so I have an anchor point to rotate and move the spine. Let's do that two more times, up and over and then back to the front, up and over, and back to the front. Now we're gonna stay facing this way. I want you to give yourself some more space. Same lead leg. Now you're gonna put your inside hand on the wall and your outside hand on your hip. I'm gonna have you use your lunge to create power to do a march. So we're gonna come back, putting the weight into that back leg, shift to your front leg, go to a full march. We're gonna drop back to lunge and swing and lift. Okay, so it's also helpful for bar. We usually do faster power knee move. This is gonna help you improve your balance for that. Let's do four and three, two and one. All right, set your feet even with each other. Outside hand will still work on the hip, but instead of on the crest, place it closer to the front of your hip. I'm gonna have you balance on one leg. Outside leg is off the ground. Bend that knee to about 90 degrees while the thigh is still hanging below the hip. And I want you to flex your ankle. So, you know, if I said make a muscle with your arm, you just squeeze your fist to make a bicep. If you can do that with your leg, I want you to imagine tension in your lower leg, tension in your foot, like a squeeze, so you feel very activated all the way down the chain. Now, we're gonna make a circle with this leg as big as you can while keeping your hips relatively level. That's why you're holding on there. So I'm gonna take my foot up into my, sorry, my whole leg up into flexion, and I'm gonna start to open it out to the side. The knee is gonna turn down as I come into extension and swing it back. Then I'm gonna go back that way. So extending the hip, turning it out to bring it around the side, swing it around to the front and down. As you're going back and forth, this should be slower than a one breath movement. Make sure you're breathing. And I'd say, it's kind of hard to think of everything at once, but every time you pause to switch direction, check, am I still maximally flexing my ankles? Am I still at 90 at the knee? 
Sometimes when we're thinking about what's going on in the hip, we can forget the rest of the legs involvement in the exercise. On your standing leg, are you still in a straight knee? Have you locked it? If you tend to lock it, it's better to work with it a little bit flexed on this one. And then we go back, up and around one more time each way. And then I'm gonna open and circle and swinging back, up and around. All right, let's go to the other side. So in the first exercise, I'm just gonna use the space of my shoulder to set my foot and then I'm gonna come down into a little lunge. And then we'll start rotated, hands behind the head again. All right, I'm gonna twist. Leading with my elbow, I'm gonna make that rainbow on the wall to turn and face it. And then a rainbow up and over to rotate away. Again, I'm letting the hip lean into the wall, but otherwise trying to stay still and stable in the legs. And up and over three more times. And two, can you tell which side you have more mobility on? I definitely can. And then back to the front. Okay, give yourself some more space away from the wall. Same staggered, but now you're gonna hold onto the wall with your hand for balance. And we're gonna play around with that lunge into a march. Outside hand stays on the hip. I'm gonna bend both knees and then drive the knee up. So keep going through that motion. Let me just move over to this wall just so you get a slightly different angle. You can see both of the legs stay parallel as I do this motion. Back heel stays off the ground. And look at how much extension goes into that back foot at the big toe. This is really great to improve your gait. Two more like this. And last one. And up. Okay. So as you go into this last one, I'm just going to stay here for right now. Supporting yourself on the wall, balancing on that inside leg, outside leg, Knee is bent at 90 degrees, ankles flexed. Hands still supporting the hip to see if it's stable, tightening all the muscles, glutes, hamstrings, everything around the ankle. We're gonna take that knee up into a march. You're gonna swing it out to the side to start the circle. So now I just want you to see a different angle of that rotation around and down. So now I'm going through the extension, trying to turn to get high around to the front and lower. So we're gonna go up, Stay squared off to the front with the rest of your body. Swing it around to the back and lower. And then up and over and down. I tell so many clients to do these as I'm showing it to them like once or twice and that's it. And I realized I don't know if I've ever done a full set of these on my own body. So I give all of you credit for doing your homework as I preach more than I practice. Two more times. I mean, practice any one thing. I promise I practice a lot. And then up, out, around to the front. Last one. Try to rotate that leg through and swing it down and then back, turned out, and around to the front. Okay, walk it out a little. I'm gonna go back to this wall just for more space. Next, we're gonna go into a little work for your hip extensor muscles. So the first thing I wanna play with is just angling. We're gonna go into a hinged position with your leg out straight behind you to activate your glute and your hamstring. So I'm gonna have you face the wall with your hands on the wall, and you're gonna kinda of play around with your distance. So I wanna be able to get hinged forward about 90 degrees at the hip. I am gonna to go to the side wall in a minute. The side view will be important after I set this up. Bear with me. <laughs> so you wanna keep the weight of your hips right over your heel and that leg on the floor parallel. Now, I wanna find enough space that I can angle forward into a full hinge with my leg behind me. Now, the first movement, I'm going to start with a big motion, turning my toes out to cause my hips to rotate and then turning my hips down and then letting the leg follow to parallel. So when I turn out, I'm gonna go with the leg as much as it can and then let the hips follow. And when I turn back down, it's gonna be hips, thigh, back to parallel. And then rotating out, turning, rotating the hips in, 
and down one more time. Leg twists, hip twists, hip untwists, leg untwists. Now, get squared off, and I want you to really drop this hip so it's level with the other one. Now I'm gonna go over here. All right, so I get it squared off. Heels pointing up to the ceiling, kneecap is pointing down. And from here, you're gonna lower about halfway to the ground and then back up even with your hip, not higher. So the focus point right now, you will feel your glutes a little, but when we're lifting and lowering the leg in parallel, we're gonna have much more attention on the hamstring. And I'm trying to tune in to the uh, fibers that are closer to the midline of my body. On the female body especially, it can be hard to train these because we have wider set hips and many of us favor standing with our feet turned out instead of parallel. Two more times, lifting and dropping, and then you're gonna hold it up even with your hip. Now, bend your knee and flex your foot, and then straighten your leg and point your toes. You're gonna try to keep your thigh at the same height and just isolate those hamstrings and their function bending your knee. Okay, so they continue to work, extending your hip joint, but now you can feel them pull the heel towards your sit bone. Three more times, and two, and one. Now, swing that leg down, and I want you to flex your spine, reach it out straight again, and lengthen. So I'm gonna curl in like I'm in a cat, and reach it away, and tuck in, and reach it away, two more times like that, and reach it away, last one, reach it away. Now, turn your toes out again, so I'm in lateral rotation. Your hip twists a little, but not that full thing we did before. Now lower that and lift it. All right, so when we're doing this motion, uh, being in turnout usually lets you get a little more hip extension, so you might find that you're lifting higher than the height of your hip now. Hold that leg up. Now when you bend your knee, I want you to bring it to the shoulder on the same side. So I'm gonna pull the knee forward with my foot flexed, point and reach it back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Let's do three and reach, two and reach. One more time and reach it back. All right, we gotta do the other leg. Shake out. I love these because you're also working the leg you're standing on pretty hard, not just the one in the air. All right, I'm gonna go back to the other wall. I can't even tell if you can see different things from one wall to the other, so at least now I know you know what's happening. All right. So we get back to that spot on the wall. You're gonna give yourself your spacing and then you're gonna take your other leg up in the air. Okay, so we're starting with it parallel. Find that hinge, make sure you are not locked out in the standing leg. And I want you to rotate, turn your toes out, turn the whole leg and then let the hip twist. Then you're gonna take the hip back down, rotate the leg back to parallel. Turn out and then turn back in and rotate foot to hip, hip to foot to come down. Two more times, foot turns out, leg rotates, hip follows. Keep pushing back onto your heel, rotate down. One more time. Check that every time when you get to the end of this twist, are you on your heel? And when you get back down to parallel, again, are you on your heel? Are your hips squared? Is that knee soft? Now, lower the leg in parallel about halfway to the floor. You're gonna lift it, Drop it, lift it. Inhale, exhale. You have four, three, two, and then you're gonna hold it up. Now, if thigh stays still, flex your foot and bend your knee, reach back out to point. Pull it in, reach away. If you're tight in your quads, do this with your knee just a little lower, but not so low that you lose the stretch you're trying to make. You've got four and three, two, finish with that knee bent. Now tuck your knee under your chest, let your spine round, kick it away and go to straight. Tuck it under, kick it away. Let that spine flex and reach two more times and out, last one, and out. All right, turn your toes out, we go back to straight leg. Remember just a little hip shift, uh, shift in the hip, <laughs> drop your leg, lift it. Let's do that eight times. You've got four, three, two, 
one. All right, so that's how this one looks. We're going to flex your foot, bring it to the same side shoulder. So pushing away from the wall, point back. Inhale in, exhale away. You've got three, two, and one. I bet when I turn around to you, I'm going to be like wicked red faced. Yes, I am. <laughs> It's like a thousand degrees in the room I'm in right now, but we're so close to the end. I'm just not going to do anything about it. All right. Back against the wall again. We're almost done. I want you to go about halfway down in that wall squat. Feet are still parallel, hip width apart. Let's take your arms overhead. Now I'm wearing a long shirt. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. You, you don't want to be tucked on your shirt tail right now. We're going to stay at this height against the wall. I'm going to have you hinge forward at the hips as far as you can while keeping your back straight and then rise back up to vertical. So the pelvis against the wall is against the wall still, but what's touching it is changing a lot. If I'm at my sacrum now, I'm almost, I am actually at the bottom of my sit bone or like the back of my sit bone, I don't know what you call that. And then down and up. Two more like this. Keep reaching your head and your hands away from those sit bones. Come back down and stay here on this angle. All right, arms down at chest height now. Rotating on your inhale, swing one arm up. See if you could top that wall. Exhale back to the middle, now the other side. Let your head follow the rotation and exhale to the center. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, middle. Inhale, twist. And center. Let's do four. Bring it back three, last two, and one more time. All right, arms up by the ears, rise back up. All right, straighten your knees for a sec. All right, last time, slight bend of the knees, arms like this against the wall, we're going for the snow angel. Excuse me. Okay, hips, ribs, head against the wall, shoulder blades, elbows, wrists and hands against the wall. Try to push all those points down evenly. Watch for rib popping on this. When you breathe in, you're gonna start to bring your arms overhead to begin tracing that snow angel shape. And then exhale, forget, I'm not gonna cue this through breath. You're gonna go slower than you're breathing. Cause I think if you do it really fast in time with your breath, you're gonna miss if you're losing stability. As you go through this range of motion up and down, you'll have a challenge that's very different at the top of the bottom. So you need to keep scanning all the points we've listed, the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists and the fingers, and occasionally just slow down or pause and try to get them flat again. <sighs> yeah, breathing is great. Two more times up and down. When you inhale, try to breathe into your back but do it slow and gently like you're putting air into a new balloon with a little resistance. And then when you exhale, contract your abs. Notice how your pelvic floor can lift a little bit to give you support. And we'll just go one more time up and down. And then elbows down towards your sides. All right. So that one's great for all the muscles around your shoulder blades and for your upper and mid back to help you have nice good posture on top of those nice strong legs. All right, have a great day.